Hello, so welcome to my first round of the World Series of Moisturizers. Uh, every day I'm going to be eliminating moisturizers until we get to one winner. So as of right now, I'm still testing them out. My skin is not happy with me. I've been testing out a lot of moisturizers lately. So anyway, bear with me. So today is the first round. Let me just mention a couple of things I just wanted to talk about really quick first. Uh, the FTC actually uh, fed, did a ruling with Sunday Riley. I know if some of you guys saw my video from October 23rd, 2018, uh, a whistleblower posted on Reddit that Sunday Riley was making her, Sunday Riley personally, the brand owner, is making her employees post positive reviews on their products on Sephora's website and on other websites. And the FTC actually investigated it and uh, Sunday Riley has d has not had to admit to doing it. However, they did agree that they would not do it any longer. So kind of an admittance, but not really. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. So I kind of I did a news story when it first came out on Reddit. I found it very fascinating. And I think there's probably more uh, things like that going on than anybody realizes. So really, reviews taken with a grain of salt. Look at the ingredients and uh, do your own research before you decide. So watch my videos, definitely check those out as well. Uh, but definitely, I never really recommend products. I like to guide people based on what their uh, interests are, if they're ingredients or fragrance or packaging or price. I like to kind of point you guys in a direction, but I like to have you guys make up your own mind. So I'll never recommend say, hey, you have to try this product. I just want you guys to make up your own decision. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Also, yesterday in the mail, uh, my Too Faced White Chocolate Bar eyeshadow palette came, and I ordered this in 2017. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. So this was sitting in a box somewhere for two years. Anyway, just I thought, I thought that was interesting to note. So if you're waiting for something, maybe after a couple of years it'll come. And it was not broken. I thought that was even more interesting. Okay, so let's get to the matchups. The first matchup I have is the Peach and Lily Antioxidant Matcha Pore Pudding Moisturizer. Uh, which I've reviewed this one, and the Sweet Chef Superfood Vitamins Moisture Boost. And I did a little kind of uh, evaluation of both of these, and obviously they both come in jar packaging, not the best for good antioxidants, uh, but both of them packaged this way. The price, so the Peach and Lily, this is the full size 1.7 ounces, and it retails for $40.00. And the Superfood from Sweet Chef is the same size, but retails for $19, so more than half the price. And actually, in terms of denatured alcohol, neither of them contain denatured alcohol. Uh, in terms of fragrance, both of them contain some fragrance. Uh, the Peach and Lily has uh, several different fragrance ingredients in the formula, which are uh, rosewood oil, bergamot oil, orange peel oil, clary oil, and thyme oil. So it's got... Uh, a few fragrance uh, essential oils in it, uh, which the scent does dissipate pretty quickly and it's not uh, super scented, so it's not really out of control. Uh, the Sweet Chef does have fragrance as well. However, it's only one fragrant ingredient and that is uh, lavender oil. So, uh, so I definitely gave the kind of point to uh, Sweet Chef because at least there's only one fragrant oil in that. So you can kind of, if your lavender isn't a huge deal, or if you like lavender, then that's kind of a nice bonus point. So uh, in terms of beneficial ingredients, Peach and Lily has several niacinamides in there, green tea, vitamin E, vitamin B, uh, lanolin. Uh, the Sweet Chef also contains some good ones, niacinamide also, uh, palmitic acid, wild cabbage, ginger extract. The ginger extract's good, ginger oil, bad. Uh, beet, mushroom, vitamin B, turmeric, vitamin E, sodium hyaluronate, vitamin C, retinol. So it's got a lot more uh, in terms of beneficial ingredients. However, it's kind of unfortunate because like the vitamin C and retinol in the jar packaging, uh, every time you open it, they degrade. So, but at least you can have the option of repackaging it if you like the formula. Um, and then in terms of acneogenic ingredients, uh, the peach and lily has ethyl hexyl palmitate, ceteryl alcohol, butylene glycol, vitamin E, vegetable oil, and steric acid. So we've got uh, a few. Uh, the sweet chef also has some butylene glycol, palmitic acid, steric acid, ethyl hexyl palmitate, uh, glycine soja oil, cottonseed oil, and sesame seed oil. So overall, the peach and lily had a few less acneogenic ingredients. So 
Um, I gave that point to Peach and Lily. In terms of overall performance, both feel very hydrating. Uh, although people with oily skin tend to like the Peach and Lily a little bit better. Uh, but I find the Sweet Chef feels a little bit more hydrating. Uh, and the Peach and Lily kind of sets to a slightly dewy finish while the Sweet Chef fully absorbs. I found the Peach and Lily has a tendency to pill if you use too many layers. So for that reason, I tend to use this one in my evening routine. Uh, and then the Sweet Chef seems to work well morning and evening and doesn't ever really pill. So overall, comparing both of these on all of those criteria, which I've done with all of these products, I gave, I was actually surprised I like the Sweet Chef better. I really liked uh, the Peach and Lily, but I was actually surprised when I really compared the two. Sweet Chef won, and uh, it was kind of a surprise win, I guess. Let's play ball. Surprise win, right? Yeah, a surprise strikeout or something. No, it wasn't a strikeout. Anyway, whatever, sports fans. So Sweet Chef will go on to face the winner of the next category. Uh, not tomorrow, but the day after. So, okay, so my next matchup is the Claire's Rich Moist Soothing Cream, which I'm on my second tube of, and the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Cream, which I'm also on my, uh, I don't even remember. It's probably my second or third tube of it, probably third. Um, so it was interesting. I just didn't know which Dr. Jart product I should try, if I should do the uh, Sycopare or the Ceramidin, but the Ceramidin seems to be, uh, a fan favorite, so that's why I decided to go with the uh, the uh, ceramidin. So, anyway, okay, so we've got these two products. So, first of all, the packaging obviously is identical plastic squeeze tube. I think they're both recyclable, although there are uh, a lot of recycling programs. So, if you're uh, very concerned about the environment, always check it out because there's some a lot of programs out there. So it's worth checking out if it's not serviceable by your local recyclable company. Uh, there's a lot of other places. So yeah, both of these has, have the little triangle on them. So I think that's a good thing. Okay, I've been saving up all my empties for like a year now. So I haven't recycled them because they're all sitting in a big thing. Okay, so the price. So the Claire's, this is two ounces and it retails for $23. The Dr. Jard is 1.6 ounces, so it's a little bit less and it sells for $48, which is more than double the price, a little bit more than double. Uh, so the Claire's definitely has the price factor going. Uh, neither of these contain any denatured alcohol, so that is a good thing. Uh, in terms of beneficial ingredients, the Claire's has uh, several shea butter, jojoba oil, beta glucan, ceramides are scattered throughout the ingredient list, vitamin E, peony, skull root, centella asiatica. And then we've got some good veggies in there, broccoli, turnips, carrots, and then rice bran. So it's got some good beneficial ingredients and some good veggies. I will say my dogs definitely hands down eat more vegetables than I do. They like carrots. They like little pea pod things. They like green beans. Anyway, uh, the Dr. Jart contains a good amount of the yeast extract. So if you are into that, it's a high amount on this list. Vegetable oil, which never really sounds exciting in skincare. For some reason, I just imagine frying eggs over it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, shea butter, ceramide. Uh, algae. However, most of the ceramides in the Dr. Jart are at the very, very end of the ingredient list, which uh, is, I'm not a big fan of that, but what are you going to do? Obviously, it's a little bit thicker cream. So anyway, so it's got, both have a lot of good beneficial ingredients. However, the Claire's just has a touch more. So that is something to consider. And in terms of acneogenic ingredients, uh, Claire's has acetyl alcohol, steric acid, jojoba seed oil, PEG-100 steroid, dimethicone, and algin. And then the Dr. Jart for acneogenic ingredients has ceteral alcohol, steric acid, butylene glycol, and vegetable oil. So in terms of acneogenic ingredients, the Dr. Jart has just a touch less, but both do have a, quite a few in there in higher amounts. Uh, but Dr. Jart has just a touch less. In terms of overall performance, I find the Dr. Jart formula super hydrating. Uh, the Claire's formula is also decent, but for me, it's not quite as hydrating as the Ceramidin. And the Claire's kind of absorbs a little bit quicker where the Ceramidin cream kind of sits at the top, giving you kind of more of a radiant finish while the Claire's kind of soaks in pretty quickly. Um, so 
overall in terms of performance and taking all these into consideration i gave the point to the dr jart ceramide and it just has a little bit more going for it however if i had done this with a different claire's like the midnight blue calming cream i'm pretty sure that one would have won however i've already reviewed that one i thought it'd be kind of fun to do this one since i haven't done much with this product yet uh even though i use it regularly so Anyway, the Dr. Jart Ceramidin will go on to the next battle, which I believe will be with Sweet Chef. Okay. So the next one coming up is the Tony Moly Choc Choc Watery Cream versus the Casa RX Advanced Snail Cream. So I know if you guys have watched me quite a bit, you know I love the Casa RX Snail Cream. This is my brand new jar. I haven't even opened it yet. I don't even want to open it yet because I'm almost finished with my last one. And I don't want to break the seal yet, but I will for the video. Um, okay, so let's see. And then the Tony Moly. So let's see the price. So the Casa RX Snail Cream, this is the full size, which is 3.4 ounces. So it's a large jar uh, and it retails for $22. And the Tony Moly Choc Choc Cream, this is the full size, which is four ounces. Is that right? That can't be four ounces. Is that right? It just doesn't look like four ounces. 60 milliliters, which is, gosh, it's got to stay on here somewhere. It doesn't. Okay. Well, 60 milliliters, which is whatever. Well, I know 50 milliliters is one point. I think this is two ounces, not four ounces. Okay. And it's $24. So either way, both prices are similar. Both sizes are similar. The Casa X is a giant jar. So uh, keeping that in mind, um, in terms of denatured alcohol, uh, both of these products are free from denatured or drying types of alcohol, which is always a good thing, especially if you have sensitive skin or drier skin. I know I used a product recently that had denatured alcohol in it without really noticing it, and my skin got sensitive after like four days, I could tell. It was a problem. So in terms of fragrance, the Casa RX Snail Cream is fragrance free. It has no scent at all. So that's always a good thing. Very, very gooey, messy product though. Um, and the Tony Moly Cream does have a couple of fragrance ingredients, which are lemon peel oil and rosewood oil. So it does have a slight scent to it, although it's not super noticeable which is a good thing. Um, it does have a little bit of fragrance in it. So if you have sensitive skin or fragrance is an issue for you, that might be a factor. So keep that one in mind. Um, but both have kind of a thicker cream consistency. That's kind of why I chose to pair them together. Um, and then the Casa RX uh, is gooey, I would say. So in terms of beneficial ingredients, Casa RX obviously has snail mucin as one of its top ingredients which in my opinion, really no other ingredient really can totally compare to that. Uh, the Tony Moly Cream obviously has a large amount of green tea in it. And Choc Choc is a K-beauty term for like clear skin or yeah, clear skin, clean skin, sparkling skin. It's kind of, that's what Choc Choc means. So, um, but in terms of the beneficial ingredients, the snail mucin, if you haven't tried it yet, I really recommend you give it a try because it is, uh, majorly impressive. However, not so much for your morning routine. It's more of an evening type thing because look at how gooey it is. It takes so long to fully absorb. Um, so it kind of takes like an entire nighttime to really absorb well. Um, so, but if you're looking for kind of a morning cream, I guess the Choc Choc cream would be a little bit more up your alley. Although it does take a little bit to absorb, it does have kind of a watery consistency, which allows it to absorb pretty quickly. So, um, okay. In terms of performance or acneogenic ingredients. So the Casa RX has ceteral alcohol, steric acid, and dimethicone. And the Tony Moly has butylene glycol. So in terms of that main issue, the Choc Choc Cream wins. However, snail mucin in and of itself is great for acne prone skin. Uh, it can do wondrous things, help brighten skin, prevent breakouts, moderately exfoliate skin, help uh, fade scars, so really, to be honest, if acneogenic ingredients is, is kind of a consideration of breakout prone skin, I'd go with the snail mucin. It really can do great things for breakout prone skin. So, and then in terms of performance, the Casa RX 
blows a lot of things out of the water. It's miracles on irritated, sensitive skin, breakout prone skin, dull skin, skin that has had too many acids used on it, skin that is sunburnt. I could go on. However, you know, I think where this is coming down to. The um, Casa Rex definitely wins this round pretty easily, and it's almost even unfair to kind of compare anything else to it because it's just so great. It is a miracle worker. So although it's gooey and messy, um, I finally did my last jar. I emptied it into one of my airless jars, and it makes it so much easier to use because then you don't have the gooey everywhere, and it's just so much better. Okay, so on to the next matchup. So the Casa X will advance. I won't do a loser's bracket because I guess in the World Series they don't do that. Maybe next year or something I'll do like a loser bracket. Okay, so my next matchup, the next game is the Skin and Lab Red Cream versus the Laneige Sika Sleeping Mask. And it's kind of a sleeping mask, but it's also just more of a moisturizer as well. So let's see, the Skin and Lab, I haven't reviewed either of their products, but I've used not either, but either of the red products. They've got the red cream, they've got the red serum. And their sales line with it is it's the cream of a million roses. And, you know, to be honest, like rose hip oil is great for skin, but a lot of other rose ingredients aren't the best for skin, especially for sensitive skin. It can be sensitizing uh, because a lot of the rose is used for fragrance, typically not so much for skin care in and of itself. So I always take those things with a grain of salt. So I, I think rose hip oil can be great. Rose water sometimes can be calming, but if you have very easily irritated or sensitive skin or eczema prone skin, uh, avoiding rose water, rose, rose flower, rosa damascana, it's probably a good thing overall to avoid that. Um, so I'm not necessarily sold that the cream of a million roses is a great thing for skin. So um, it does have a nice kind of kind of a gooey texture to it, but absorbs pretty quickly. And it definitely is pretty fragrant, but it sets to a nice radiant finish. So if you kind of like a dewy finish, that is kind of what I like about this, but I can instantly smell a lot of the fragrance in it. Uh, whereas the Laneige has several sleeping mask products. They've got their water sleeping mask, their lavender sleeping mask, and now their Sika sleeping mask is one of their newer masks. And I've been meaning to get to review this, and I just haven't had a chance to for quite some time. Which end is open? There we go. So, obviously, you guys can see that I always try and open just a little crack to keep the air out as much as I can. But out of all the Laneige sleeping masks, this one is my favorite. It does have a small amount of fragrance in it from tea tree oil. Uh, it's pretty low on the ingredient list, so it's not a huge issue. I know tea tree oil can be used... Um, by people with acne. However, it can also be a potential irritant for sensitive skin, so it's something to keep in mind. Um, but overall, in terms of the price for both of these, it's around $25. It just depends on which site you purchase them from, uh, but they're both pretty close in price, around $25, although Laneige is slightly larger size. So um, overall, especially if you have more sensitive skin, uh, I'm going to hand this one to Laneige. The Sick of Sleeping Mask is great, especially if you have drier skin or if you have acne-prone skin. It's loaded with Centella Asiatica as well as several other beneficial ingredients such as shea butter, squalane, and panthenol. Whereas the Skin and Lab Cream focuses too much on fragrance ingredients, especially the roses, although if you uh, like the rose, there's nothing wrong with that. But overall, for me, hands down, this one goes to Laneige. So... Uh, in the next matchup, the Laneige will be matching off with the Casarex uh, Snail Cream. So that should be an interesting round. So anyway, I'll have to review the Skin and Lab products more in depth uh, in the future. So I don't know, they're pretty popular. So, okay, so the next one is, I kind of did this, the uh, hemp-themed products. And this is the Glam Glow Moisture Trip with the Pharmacy Better Days Ahead Moisturizer. And the one thing I should mention is that the Pharmacy Better Days Ahead actually does include uh, the CBD, 50 milligrams of it, whereas the Glam Glow doesn't feature the CBD. It's got the hemp oil. So 
it doesn't have that uh, CBD in there like the pharmacy does. So I did want to mention that because it is, it is a little bit different. CBD is kind of being shown to be great for uh, aches and pains and muscle soreness and even things like uh, acne or sensitive skin. So something to keep in mind. Uh, but the pharmacy, so this is the full size and it's $68. And the Glam Glow, this is the full size and it's $54. So I think the size of both these are the same. 50 milligrams and this probably will never say and I'll never be able to find it. 50 milligrams. Okay, so they are identical. So the pharmacy is a little bit more, not a ton more. Both of these have jar packaging, which I'm not obviously a huge fan of. But the Glam Glow one, I just love, this is my favorite Glam Glow product they've made because I find it to be super hydrating and uh, it's fragrance free. It doesn't have any scent to it at all and it absorbs pretty quickly. So I find this to work well. I'm definitely this winter going to be using this quite frequently and just because of how hydrating it is. However, if you have oilier skin, uh, you might not appreciate that so much. So Pharmacy has a, a few fragrance ingredients in it and I did, I think I did a full review of this one. Um, it does have several fragrance ingredients in it, although they are natural ones. Uh, so it's not hugely scented and it does dissipate pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, so definitely like both of these. However, if you have sensitive skin, the pharmacy fragrance ingredients could be a potential issue. And Although it does have the CBD in it, it only has 50 milligrams for this entire jar. So each little scoop, the amount you're really getting is negligible. It's not a huge amount. So if that's a huge issue, definitely pick up something that has a higher milligram amount. There's not a ton in the pharmacy. It just, it isn't. So at least they threw it in and they've thrown in some adaptogens. But overall, between these two, I really picked the pharmacy. I love the formula. Very hydrating, fragrance-free, a little bit goes a long way, and a little bit more affordable. So, uh, anyway, so the pharmacy will be teaming off with the winner of the next bracket. The Fresh Lotus Youth Preserve Dream Cream and the Basha Chia Seed Moisturizer, which is a rather new product uh, from Basha, and I really am enjoying it. So, the Basha is uh, $38, and the Fresh is $48. So they're pretty close in price and the same identical size. So uh, actually the Bosch is just a touch smaller. So the Bosch is super hydrating chia seed and it's thicker. Actually the texture of this one kind of reminds me of the Glam Glow a bit. Uh, it's super thick and hydrating and it's going to come in handy this winter. And a little bit of it goes a very long way and it plays well with other products. Super moisturizing has no fragrance in it either. And the Fresh product is also kind of rather hydrating, but it does have some fragrance ingredients in it uh, from lemon peel oil, limonene, citral, and then the Fresh also has tea butyl alcohol in it, which is considered a, a type of denatured or drying type of alcohol. So that is a major downer with that one. Uh, both are packaged in jars, which again, not a huge fan of. We'll see what the winner happens to be packaged in. But overall, the Basha is a winner, in my opinion, by a landslide. The fresh one was okay, but for me, I really like the Basha. It's super hydrating and no alcohol and no fragrance and loaded with good moisturizing ingredients. And that chia seed is showing up in a lot of products as well. Whereas the fresh, I, this one to me... I prefer the original Youth Lotus Cream, not the Dream, the blue version. The blue version is just a little bit too scented, a little bit too much alcohol, and just not hydrating enough. And overall, it doesn't tend to play well with other products either. So the Basha is a great product, so I really recommend you check that one out. So overall, Basha wins this round by a landslide. Okay, the next matchup. So Basha will be going against Glam Glow, and that will be interesting because I really like both of them. They both have similar textures. I'm a little nervous to do that one. Okay, so the next round, let me move this stuff out of the way, is the Tula Hydrating Day and Night Cream versus the Skin Iceland Oxygen Infusion Night Cream. 
So I think this is the mini half size, it is, of the Tula. So the full size of the Tula retails for $52, and this is the regular full size of the uh, Skin Iceland, and this one retails for $68, although I think I got it through like FabFitFun for like $10, I want to say. I'm pretty sure. So might be worth Googling Skin Iceland before you pick them up. So the Skin Iceland Oxygen Infusion Cream, the claim is that they infuse this with oxygen to help your skin. But oxygen actually can be pro-aging. And uh, the cream, though, feels nicely hydrating on skin, although it has kind of almost a liquidy cream texture to it. And uh, so oxygen is not great for skin, which is why we have things called antioxidants. Oxidants. They're fighting the free radicals that oxygen contains. So, although I like the texture to it and it feels hydrating and my skin doesn't look older after using it, I'm just not convinced infusing anything with oxygen actually is great for skin because oxygen can be pro-aging. So, I don't know if they just whip the air into it or what, uh, but overall, it's not the best for skin. So... I don't know, anything where it says like oxygen infused or um, air infused or whipped with air or something like that, uh, it's just not the best. So the Skin Iceland also has a, a light amount of fragrance in it and the fragrance ingredients in the Skin Iceland are scattered throughout the ingredient list. So uh, usually at fragrance you'll see most of the time they'll be at the very end of an ingredient list. In the Skin Iceland they're scattered through the ingredient list which means you're getting more of them the higher up they are on the list. And the uh, Tula is a little bit thicker cream, kind of a gel lotion texture to it which absorbs pretty quickly and feels more hydrating than the Skin Iceland. Uh, the Tula does have a little bit of fragrance in it as well. It has kind of a floral scent which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, which does dissipate over the course of your wear. Not immediately, it takes a while to dissipate, but it eventually does. So overall, the Tula is a little bit more hydrating, doesn't contain the pro-aging oxygen. And uh, both of these, to be honest, they're not probably the best of the best. Although a lot of people really love the Tula, I would love it if the fragrance were gone, but Overall, in my opinion, the Tula is just going to be much better for skin and much better in terms of anti-aging. Uh, so, yeah, so it's got some good ingredients, some good hydrating ingredients in there, and the oxygen in the Skin Iceland is the uh, nail in the coffin for that one. So, Tula wins that round. So, I think this is my last one, and this is the... Derma E Advanced Peptides and Collagen Moisturizer versus the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. And both of these were mentioned in my um, dupes for Proteiny video. They were both runner runner up. So close, but not close enough. But they're both decent moisturizers. Uh, both contain peptides. So the Derma E is really a bargain. So this is the full size, which is two ounces and retails for $21. And the It Confidence in a Cream is also two ounces, but it retails for $48. So it's almost, it's actually more than double, I think. Yes, technically more than double the price. And uh, the It Confidence in a Cream obviously has the traits of a lot of It products where it's got long, long, long ingredient lists. So they can say they've got, you know, collagen in there. They can say they've got the peptides in there. They can say they've got Shea Moisture butter in there, yada, 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 because the ingredient list is like, the entire back panel of it, which gives them more room to break for things. The Derma E does contain a lot of good peptides in there, and it doesn't have a super long ingredient list. So if you have sensitive skin or easily irritated skin or skin that's allergic to a lot of things, uh, the Derma E is going to be the one you're going to want to go with. Uh, it's kind of got a thicker consistency to it, but it does have a little bit of fragrance in it but not a ton like a lot of other products are. The fragrance in it's pretty light and it does dissipate almost immediately. Uh, it definitely tends to be a good evening cream because it does take a little bit of time to fully absorb into skin, uh, but it is very hydrating. And I really like their serum version of it as well. Uh, whereas the It Cosmetics is also kind of has a thick te texture to it as well, but it's got so many different ingredients in it that if you have skin that's easily irritated by anything, 
The it is usually probably a brand typically you'd rather avoid because of that. And the it cosmetics cream has a lot of fragrance ingredients uh, scattered throughout the ingredient list as well. So sensitive skin, uh, allergy prone skin, acne prone skin, allergic skin, eczema skin, probably a pass on the confidence in a cream just because of all the different ingredients. And the Dura E has all the good peptides in there, the ones we talk about, Matrixil, oh, the one with an A, Argan, am I even going to try it? Uh, Pycnogenol, which is another good antioxidant in there. Where is the one with the A? I can't find it in here. But anyway, it's the other good uh, peptide. Ah, I can't find it. Maybe it's not in here. I thought it was in... Oh, Arg Argoline. There we go. So it's got all the really good ones. The famous peptides are in there and some good hydrating ingredients. Very, very, very slight fragrance, but not a huge fragrance. Jar packaging, again, not super excited about, but both of these have that. So in my opinion, for the money, hands down, the Derma is the one you're going to want to go to. Unless... You prefer to have a really simple routine and you prefer to get all of your good ingredients in one product, then the It Cosmetics might be a great one for you because they kind of include a little small amount of a lot of things in all their products. So, But overall, hands down, this one went to the Derma E Moisturizer. So Derma E will go against Tula uh, in Friday's video. So uh, tomorrow I'll be doing my second round of kind of just cutting the, cutting the, cutting the bracket things in half. And then moving on. So anyway, it was kind of fun. So um, I'm interested in your guys' thoughts. So definitely leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Stay tuned for more tomorrow. And thank you guys so much.